try this out. I'm Lauren Nellis. I'm the founder and executive director of Food Empowerment Project. Um, I've been involved in the animal rights movement for over 30 years. And um, basically, uh, Food Empowerment Project is a vegan food justice group. So we promote veganism for the animals, and we have various campaigns on their behalf. But we also advocate for the rights of farm workers who pick our food, work on lack of access to healthy foods in black and brown communities, and try to get people not to buy chocolate sourced from where the worst forms of child labor, including slavery, take place. So the talk that I'm giving is the first time I've really spoken about this publicly, and so I definitely want to give time for Q&A. So if someone can let me know, like, looking at my crew, like, when I have like 10 minutes, I'll try to shut myself up so y'all can ask questions. Um, but the, the reason for this talk came about because um, I run Food Empowerment Project, and over the years we've been asked several times about organizations wanting to start chapters of our work. And uh, I've always been a little bit uncomfortable with it, but this amazing activist named Anika in Washington State like, was like, this is what we want to do. We want to help you grow. And I was like, all right, yeah, let's do this. And um, we ha so we started contemplating if we wanted to have chapters elsewhere. And one of the countries that approached us was actually an activist from Brazil. And when I explained to him that the organization could not be called Food Empowerment Project, he was a bit upset about that because that was part of the brand he wanted to be with. And while I completely appreciated that, because this is my group, um, it wasn't right because they were in Brazil and the national language there is not English. So the organization's name should not be in English, it should have been in Portuguese. So, um, over time, I've been thinking about this a lot, like why am I so uncomfortable with chapters? And recently when I was interviewed by a publication called Tofu Magazine, is kind of where this all came from, because I finally allowed myself to really think hard about why I was having such a problem. And the reason why is because I believe that chapters replicate colonization. And it's a form in which uh, organizations are able to brand themselves more than they are really representing what needs to be done for the animals. And again, I will disclose fully that I ran the chapter of an English organization called Viva. I ran the USA chapter. But for those of you who aren't familiar as much with the term colonization, it's basically where you have people who typically, but in this case not always, come from um, a dominant, I don't know, I'm trying to phrase all this correctly, I will use the Americas, because that's where my peoples are from. But basically, it's, we think about when you had Columbus come into the Americas. And basically, they changed our diet, they changed our land, they changed our decision making, they changed our hierarchy, they changed everything. And forced everything to be like they were. Um, they didn't want to eat our food because they didn't want to become native like us. So it's a way in which people push their ideas and way of being on others. The reason why this is a little bit sensitive is because I'm not saying that I don't think that organizations should work with um, these other groups who do this, but I'm saying that I don't believe it's the best way forward. First of all, I don't think colonization is anything that should be replicated. It should be something that we look at and we say we need to stop this in every form that it takes, even though it may not be like it was thousands, however long ago, we don't need to be replicating it now. Again, how this is happening in our movement is you have organizations who are primarily from the global north um, spreading themselves not only around the global north but also the global south. So you have organizations based in the United States or in Europe who are starting chapters in places like Mexico and India and all over the world and having it be their way of doing things. Now, I say this as an activist who's been involved, like I said, in the animal rights movement for a long time. In the 90s, I started a global campaign against Procter & Gamble, and I worked with activists all over the world. And there were activists all over the world in all of these different countries doing their own thing for the animals. So I find the need of U.S. and other European groups going to these countries and starting their own chapters offensive to the activists who are on the ground and who have been doing this work and who have been doing this work in a way that's appropriate for them. Just because something works the way that it does in the United States 
doesn't mean it's easily replicated when you do it in another country, period. So, and now this is something I have talked about that I find the method of us going to other countries and starting chapters as being a repetition of colonization. Mostly because I don't find that it helps the activists there and because I don't feel it's respectful um, of, of activists. But again, it's kind of like breaking down. We're in a movement where the people or the, the beings that we are trying to represent can't tell us any differently, right? So there's a whole lot of arrogance that has to come out of us to presume that we know what's best for them. Because the human beings would tell us like, oh no, you don't need to go over there and do that, right? People who can represent and vocally tell us, but we don't have that type of communications at this point with non-human animals. So we make lots of assumptions and a lot of bad assumptions. Um, so as I'm looking at what's been happening around the globe, I started to realize that the same thing is happening within the United States. That there are chapters being created in the United States of organizations, um, and they're being told to do what it is that the main organization does, right? The mom, the headquarters, right? So I can even say with the Food Empowerment Project, right? We have amazing, brilliant, creative activists um, there, but they were always gonna be bound by what Food Empowerment Project's mission was. And this is a lot more restricting with some of the other organizations that, and I, it's hard because I don't want to name names, but I'm really hoping that you all know what I'm talking about um, by organizations having chapters, and they're not able to do what they want to do, they have to do what the chapter is telling, what the, the main organization is telling them to do. So, I have somebody who's, I'm from originally from Texas, I live in California, I've lived in New Mexico, I've lived in Georgia, and I've always, you know, been doing animal rights since I was in high school. And I can tell you, being an animal rights activist in California and the type of activism we do there is a lot different than the activism you can do in Georgia. And it's a lot different than the activism you can do in Texas because it's different people. So once we have chapters dictating how everybody should be doing things, it's not always going to work. And there needs to be some humility in that and saying, you need to do what it is that you need to do that meets that community better than what I am telling you. When I started on the animal rights movement, there were grassroots organizations around the country. Not only were we working with, um, this is our Washington chapter, um, which is no longer in existence. Because of my stance on this issue and my change of thought about this, we have dissolved our Washington chapter. I forgot to mention that. Um, we now have supporters in Washington, which this is gonna be a lot of them, but we want them to be able to um, be creative and come up with their own ideas on what it is that they want to do without having to be limited by us. So going back to what I was saying, when I started out the animal rights movement when I was in high school, there are animal rights groups all over the country. There are animal rights groups in Memphis and Atlanta and everywhere around the country. There were individual organizations with their own names doing good work for the animals, but they were also working with the national organizations like I did. I had an animal rights group in my high school and in my college and I worked with national groups, but I also created campaigns on my own. And I feel like going down this path of doing chapters is limiting creativity that we as activists have because we are being bound by what somebody else is telling us to do. Is that, is people following me on that? I know that this is kind of annoying that I'm talking about this, but I think it's really important for us to acknowledge that, in my opinion, take it or leave it, that chapters are stifling this movement and they are restricting creativity and they're limiting what it is that we can do as activists. Um, where we are in the Bay Area, there's a lot of activists who have gotten disenchanted with some of the organizations that they worked with and now feel as if that there's nothing for them to do. They feel alone. This chapter made them feel like it was only their way of doing things that could help the animals and nothing else could help the animals. They were told that they were the only group that was actually helping the animals. And it's not limited, there's lots of groups who do this. Um, and it's damaging because once, if something happens, you have a falling out with somebody, or maybe you disagree with the tactic that they're doing, all of a sudden you feel like you're alone and you don't know what else to do. And we lose a lot of good activists that way. Instead of activists becoming excited and being told, let's talk about this, Rachel, what do you want to do? How do we do, what do we want to focus on? Because always focusing on what these 
um, I don't want to say national because they're not all national organizations, but these organizations are telling groups to do isn't always what the activists want to do, but the activists are just so eager to do something for the animals. They're willing to sacrifice their own personal comfort or things that they think they should or shouldn't be doing. Um, so this is my whole like, it's important for us to have these differences, right? I mean, some of these things I think are damaging, but at the end of the day, most damaging is what's happening to activism. Activism is so sad right now in my mind. When I look at the animal rights movement right now, I am so sad because it's not what it was in the 80s when we were so tiny. And at this point in time, we should be a vibrant, creative, just overflowing with different organizations with their different ideas that we can all learn from and exchange ideas. And I mean, one of the things that also sparked this was um, the activists in the Philippines have been um, protesting Canada's dumping waste on their country. And the activists, and this, this comes from learning dealing with activists around the world, is that activists in different places around the world can't do all that we do in this country. So I've worked with activists in Japan, and their anti-vivisection work was basically doing parade, marching in the streets with animal masks on, right? And it was a happy animal mask celebration and reaching out to people. Well, the activists in the Philippines were doing their own march against what was happening, and they had the most creative outfits that they were wearing um, to try to draw attention to this. And all I can think of is when I look at our country, I can see a lot of the same stuff going on everywhere. It's like basically you're doing this. See, I'm trying not to talk about it, but it's really difficult. So I'm hoping, I know, let's pretend that everybody wants people to um, have cageless popsicles. <laughs> and cage lifts popsicles are what people think everybody should be doing. And so with the cageless popsicle campaign, but you live in like where it's freezing cold and you're like, I'm not so worried about the popsicles here. You know, I'm worried about all this other stuff that's going on, right? So there's a tendency to be like, this is what you're going to work on, even if activists have other things they want to do. There may also be a tendency to be like, um, See, I'm trying again to think of a good way of, um, you have to hold these signs that say, um, it's not a book, it's a magazine. And people are like saying that that's what you have to hold up, right? And you're like, but that's not really going to resonate with the people in my community. That may work in California, but it's not going to work for me in Savannah, Georgia, right? That's just not going to cut it. So there's a problem with thinking we can replicate something and everybody should be using that. And so that literally is the entire point of my talk, is just asking people to start thinking differently. And I, what I really want to do is, learn how to use these, um, <laughs> is reminding people that individuals, you have so much power, right? Like I want every black and brown person to start their own organization in animal rights Woo! and doing whatever they do. That is what I would love to see, right? And I want to help you do it. Go, let's go. You're going to have a different way of looking at vivisection. You're going to have a different way of looking at all the things that we face in this movement. Let's talk about the ways you can do that. But I know that not everybody has that, right? Because that's what I've been told when I've started to talk to people about this. Is not everybody's going to want to start their own group, right? I get that. My staff who's here is probably like, "No, nah, we're good, Lauren. You you deal with all the headaches and all the personalities. We'll just do it. You know, we'll do our deal." But I think that, and I understand that. And, but it doesn't mean, well, one, I'm here to help you in any, in every capacity. You don't have to start your own group, right? You can be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that this restaurant is selling foie gras. I want to go out there. You don't have to start a group to do that. Find a couple people to go out with you and just hold a sign. That and that, we got a restaurant in California, of course, that was California, um, to stop selling foie gras by two to four people going out there every weekend just holding signs. It just annoyed them until they stopped. You know, it's weird. It's, you know, simple things in terms of campaigning style is so simple, you know? And that's what we've learned from, if you look at the history of so many movements in this country, it's just consistency. Consistency is what annoys these people. Um, so again, you don't have to start your own group. I'm here if you want to start your own group. I am so happy to help you either way. 
My dream, though, of course, is having more organizations like Food Empowerment Project or other organizations that are run by black and brown people who don't just silo animal rights activism or animal rights and say, this is all we're going to talk about. That we have organizations that are going to fight the good fight for non-human animals, but are also going to um, understand other social justice issues and ramifications that aren't going to be like, I'm at any cost, by any means necessary, means throwing everybody else under the bus. That's not what I want. I would love organizations to start that will be able to do good work for animals, but recognize, not fall into the trap of placing one above the other and understanding that we're all connected in this path to liberation and that we can't pull this apart anymore. We're not gonna allow people to pull these issues apart anymore that we're gonna all keep these issues together, but our, our main issue may be anti-vivisection, but it doesn't mean you're gonna say really messed up stuff when it comes to other social justice issues that are going on. Um, again, I'm leaving this short because I want people to ask questions about cage-free popsicles. Um, <laughs> but again, we wanna help Food Empowerment Project. I mean, I've been talking to activists for a long time about this stuff, and, and I apologize to everybody who like, who's contacted Food Empowerment Project has been like, hey, I want to start a chapter. And we're like, yeah, great, that'd be wonderful. And then they never hear back from us. Because I hadn't been able to put my finger on it on what bothered me about chapters so much. But I knew what was bothering me about them internationally, right? As a woman who's, was, whose peoples was colonized, I understood that. I understood why it didn't feel good to me to know that these groups were going to other countries and, and using information that maybe wasn't pertinent to that country. But I didn't understand why it also bothered me into the United States until I really started to see, one, it was a form of replicating colonization, but also it was really stifling activism. It doesn't really matter like how much you don't want that to happen, as I did with my Washington chapter, it's unavoidable. I started the organization, they want to respect the mission that I created, and I demand that, quite frankly, right? I demand that. We are a very wide mission organization. We can't have anybody ever referring to you know, agricultural chemicals on farm workers and have that uh, study have been tested on animals. It, we, that is how much we have to think about these things as an organization. But also just how looking at how activists think that in one area of the country, and again, if you've lived in other places, you know, I mean, literally, California and Georgia are very, very, very different. And the types of activism you do, you owe it to the animals that it needs to be different. And you owe it to yourself to where you're not feeling like you're not accomplishing anything. But at the end of the day, I fear that what's happened is, is that what people are more interested in is getting their name out there and not the work for the animals. And that's what I want to change. Thanks.